specialized cells. In this lesson, we'll be talking about the hierarchy of cells, specialized cells, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and then the organism in its entirety. So what do the following have in common? So I want you to pause the video and write down what does a city and an animal have in common between the two of them. So now both our city and our living things both require power. In terms of a city, you're looking at something like a power plant. In terms of an animal, you're looking at fat cells. So animals are going to mobilize their fat cells, among other things, to create energy for the body. Both are going to require a transportation network. For cities, it's something like highways and roads. In animals, it's going to be things like the circulatory system, the lymphatic system. And lastly, both are going to require some kind of police force. For cities, it's actually going to be the physical police. And in the animals, it's going to be the immune system. The immune system is going to fight off the invaders, the bad guys that try to infiltrate the body. Hierarchy of cells. Complex organisms are made up of different types of cells, which are specialized to perform a certain function. These specialized cells then need to be organized within the organism to carry out their function. These levels of organization form a hierarchy with the most complex at the top and the least complex at the bottom. And that's what we're showing here. So the most complex is going to be the organism itself. Now, in an organism, you're going to have many different organ systems working together. And that's what we're showing here. So let's start at the bottom. So the least complex are at the bottom. And that's going to be our specialized cells. These can be things like a muscle cell or a nerve cell. And they're going to be a cell which performs a specific function. Uh, from that, there are going to be tissues. Our tissue, by definition, is a collection of similar cells that perform a particular function. So this could be a bunch of muscle cells. Then we have organs, which are one or more different tissues working together to perform a specific function, like the heart. And then we have an organ system, a group of organs and structures that work together to perform a vital body function. So for instance, digestion. And then we have the organism at the top of the hierarchy, the most complex. And it's going to have many different organ systems working together. And that's what we have here. So our specialized cells in this case, for example, would be a heart muscle cells. They'd all be the same kind of cells and they're all gonna perform a certain function. Now, if you have a collection of heart muscle cells, you're gonna create heart tissue. If you have a whole bunch of heart tissues, you'll eventually make a heart, which is an organ. Now, it's also gonna have heart tissue. It's gonna have nerve tissue. It's gonna have a few different types of tissues that all perform a similar function to create our heart. Now, if you have the heart along with the blood vessels, you're gonna get the circulatory system, which was shown right there. And now if you combine the circulatory system, the digestive system, the nervous system, all the different systems together, you'll get our organism at the top of our hierarchy. Specialized cells. Specialized cells have physical and chemical differences which allow them to perform one job very well. For instance, nerve cells transmit electrical signals around the body, allowing you to think, sense, and move. Muscle cells are able to contract, causing movement. And red blood cells carry oxygen around your body, while white blood cells fight infection. So each cell, even though it has the same genetic makeup, performs a specific body function based on its structure. And you can see that the nerve structure looks very different from the muscle cell structure, which is very different from the red blood cell structure. They all look very different because they each have a different function. Remember, structure equals function. Tissues. So there are four main kinds of tissues. Epithelial tissue, which is going to be your skin, lining of internal organs, etc. Connective tissue, bones, tendons, blood. Muscle tissue, cardiac, skeletal, smooth. And nerve tissue, things like brains and nerves. First up, epithelial tissue. So for example, skin, lining of internal organs, etc. They're thin sheets of tightly packed cells. They protect you from dehydration and they keep everything together. Essentially, they create a barrier that prevents things from coming in and prevents things from going out. And on average, humans will shed 40 pounds of skin in their lifetime. That's a ton of skin. Number two, connective tissue. So for example, bone, fat, which is also called adipose, tendons, and blood. They hold various types of cells together using fibers and they're used for support and insulation. Muscle tissue. So for example, cardiac, which is muscle tissue in your heart, skeletal, which is what pulls bones around, and smooth muscle, which is going to be responsible for intestine and stomach movement. So your skeletal is going to be your voluntary. So things you can control. And your smooth muscle and your cardiac are going to be involuntary. As in you can't control it. It's just going to happen on its own. So muscle tissue is made up of bundles of long cells called muscle fibers, which can shorten to contract the muscle. And as I said, no matter whether you're talking about cardiac, skeletal, or smooth, they're all used for movement. Nerve tissue. So for example, brain and nerves, they're long, thin cells with branches which conduct electricity throughout the body. And they can be really long. They can be over a meter long and stretch from near your head to near the bottom of your feet. And they're responsible for sensory communication and coordination of bodily functions. Organs. So after cells, we had tissues, and now we have organs. Organs are going to be a collection of tissues that are all working together to perform a specific function. So for example, the heart, liver, stomach, and small intestine all contain muscle, nerve, epithelial, and connective tissues. So they contain different tissue types to perform a specific function. After organs, we have organ systems. 
An organ system is a group of organs which work together to perform a bodily function. So, for example, the digestive system involves the organs the stomach, small and large intestine, among others, and they're all going to work together to perform the digestive system function. The respiratory system is going to involve the lungs, bronchi, and trachea, all organs, and the circulatory system utilizes the heart, blood vessels, etc. to perform the circulatory system functions. And here we have it again, just in review. Our simplest is going to be our cells. They're going to be specialized cells, muscle cell, nerve cell, etc. Our tissue is going to be our collection of cells. So, in this case, four muscle cells. And then if you have a collection of tissues all doing a specific thing, you get an organ. If you combine multiple organs to perform a specific function, you get an organ system, and all the organ systems working together make up the organism. And that concludes our lesson on specialized cells. Loud.